Research is showing that sibling relationship has set the stage for future relationships. The, the first mm -hmm. place yep. that children get to learn how to be for one another, how to work with one another, how to compromise, how to listen, um, how to get along with people you live with is with their siblings. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. I am here this week with my good friend, Sherry Salixson, and I'm so glad to have her back on the podcast. She's been on with me for, well, I think this is your third time that you've been I on think the so. podcast. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, so it's, it's fun. We love having return guests. And um, you know, every time we've had you on, we've gotten a great response. And we've always talked about science in the past because Sherry is a geek, you guys. She is a science nerd and she loves it. And, and she is, oh, she's amazing. As a matter of fact, she is the one who's teaching biology to my oldest daughter this year through Apologia. And she has these amazing videos. And so I was just telling her before the break, I said, it's so cool because Sherry like takes Brooklyn on these journeys through her biology curriculum um, and teaches her all the things that I can't teach her. Like I can take Brooklyn for a walk in nature, but I can't explain all the things to her that are happening. And so Sherry does that for us virtually through video and she's amazing. So, so anyway, um, I love her and we're so grateful for her ministry and the gifts that God has given her through science. Um, but we're not talking about science this week. We're talking about sibling relationships because <laughs> Sherry homeschooled her kids for many years. How many years did you homeschool? Do you know? 21. Kindergarten through high school. So 21. Okay. All four kids. Yeah. So she, yep. she's got four kids that you had within six years, right? Yes, I yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. You, you had your hands full Woo. when you were... Yeah. When you had those those little ones, um, and so she homeschooled her kids all the way through, and she has a wealth of information when it comes to science, but also when it comes to family and sibling relationships. And so we're going to talk about that this week. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool, who also has amazing Christian worldview curriculum. So if you're looking for something for your kids, you know, you're, maybe whatever you're doing isn't working or you're looking already into next year and trying to figure out what you're going to do for them. They have every subject, every grade, and it all comes from a very strong biblical worldview. So if you're looking for a good curriculum for your kids, check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. And you may even want to shoot them a message and say, hey, thanks for sponsoring the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast, um, as well as Apologia. You know, we're so grateful for Apologia um, and for what Sherry does with them um, and them sponsoring our podcast as well. So um, Sherry, welcome back though to the podcast. For those who maybe are not familiar with you, will you quickly introduce yourself to us? So I'm a homeschool mom of four. We homeschooled our kids kindergarten all the way through high school. Um, I Before I was a mom, I, I was promoted to mom. I had a career as a marine biologist, and I worked at Walt Disney World's Living Seas Pavilion, um, particularly with the predators. I published shark behavior research and um, worked in that arena and um, love talking to families about seeing God's fingerprints in science. So I write curriculum for Apologia, um, I've written a couple of their courses, and I do instructional videos, as you said, for our middle school and high school courses, teaching students soup to nuts. Um, everything, including experiments all the way through. My kids are all grown now. They've been through college. I, we could talk about that, what they're doing and their uniqueness and just some amazing things as homeschoolers, how they're, you know, succeeding in the world. And, yeah. you know, it, it's been an amazing experience to do that. Um, and um, that's pretty much me. I just, I love to talk about homeschool, to encourage homeschoolers and moms and uh, families in, um, in their journey as parenting, which we're going to talk about today. Yeah, we we are so happy about this because pretty much every homeschool family there are, there are homeschool families, of course, who have just one child. Uh, but even if you only have one child, that child still hopefully interacts with other children. And so we're going to talk about that the importance of that. How do kids interact with one another, um, especially with their own siblings? But before we get into that, I do want to just uh, say thank you for those of you who have continued to support the Schoolhouse Rocked Ministry. We are so grateful for your financial support. We're grateful for your prayers. We are grateful for the encouraging notes that we continue to get. If you want to continue to support this ministry, you can do so by going to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. You can make a donation um, through the website, but also you can stream the movie for free, which you guys know, I, I tell you all the time. And it's so funny. I still hear people are like, I haven't seen it yet. Sometimes people will say to me, I haven't had time to watch it. And I'm like, 
Yes, you have. You just haven't watched it yet. Trust me, it's really worth watching. It's worth sitting down for an hour and a half and watching it with your family. Um, and I don't say that because we did an amazing job, but because God did amazing work through it. I know Sherry knows pretty much everyone who's in the movie. And um, so so it is. it will change you. Um, you guys, if you haven't seen the movie yet, watch it. Schoolhouserock.com. You can watch it for free. And if you do stream it for free, you will get access to our free homeschool survival kit, which you can get for free either way. All the things on our website are free. So just go there, find the cool stuff on there um, and then share this podcast with your friends. So um, anyway, Sherry, let's talk about siblings. Uh, you know, you you had four kids. I have two kids. And anytime you get more than one sinful child in a room with another sinful child, and then you've got sinful parents who are trying to raise these sinful kids, it can sometimes turn into disaster. And it is always shocking to me how you can go from total peace and happiness and in an instant, there's fighting and gnashing of teeth and screaming. And I'm like, how does this happen? We were just getting along so well. We were just playing right. a game and everyone was happy and laughing. And now people are crying. Yep. And I keep thinking that the older my girls get, that they're going to grow out of it. And they have grown out of some of the bickering and some types of the bickering. But oh, good golly, it still shocks me that my girls still argue and and fight with one another. So what was your experience with your kids? You had four kids. All of them, I'm sure, had different personalities. Um, kind of <laughs> just walk us through what did it look like in your home and how did you help to kind of navigate through those years of sibling rivalry? Yeah, you know, there's there's not a cut and dried step one, step two, step three. There's some principles we can talk about and some, some reasons behind it. But, um, you know, I remember at one point just so frustrated with with my children's constant bickering. And you talked about the screaming and the crying. Sometimes it was from me. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but I remember at one point just just saying to them, you know, guys, when mom and dad are dead, you're only going to have yourselves. Oh, yeah. And so <laughs> you guys, that's all you'll have. You guys have got to be there for each other. And that's like, I think that's the heart of parents. It, maybe not that frustrated, but but we want our kids to be able to rely on one another. I mean, the the mm -hmm. whole purpose of God placing them intentionally into our homes, they that he knows they need each other. In the same way that, you know, I looked at God's give God's um giving God giving me my husband and his unique be, be, um personality and and bent and was a great compliment to me. It was a great something I needed to help refine and grow me closer to Christ. And yeah. helped me and my children helped me see, you know, I need, you know, I need this or I'm, I'm sitting here, or I'm sitting there. And so it's the same way with each other. This, this whole, the whole purpose of this is, is to help them see the reason behind what we're doing, why it's important to build relationships and closeness. We want them to be close. Um, but I actually, um, I, after our kids graduated, I went um, back to school. I got my master's in education because as a homeschooler, I'm like, what are they learning? Maybe there's something magical that I'm missing. And I just, you yeah. know, hope, helping these homeschoolers. And I realize, of course, academically, we're homeschooling the best. I mean, you know that, I know that. But but the research has also shows some some relationship issues. Children really don't do well in a multi, you know, 30 plus kid, all the same age. Research is showing that sibling relationships has set the stage for future relationships. The, the first mm -hmm. place yep. that children get to learn how to be for one another, how to work with one another, how to compromise, how to listen, um, how to get along with people you live with is with their siblings. And so yeah. it helps better prepare them for adulthood to work with coworkers, to work with roommates, to work with their spouses. And yeah. so that was that perspective helped me to change the way that I talked to them about it. Because yes, the bickering is going to happen. Yes, there's going to be frustration and, and friction. Um, and so, and we are there to guide them through the process. So um, what a blessing as homeschoolers, we can be with yeah. them all the time to address those issues. I mean, we're not there to constantly hover because they need to learn how to work it out themselves, particularly right. as they get older. But we have to give them the tools. We have to give them the the, the pattern and, and train them in character. You know, their friends are going to change over the years, but family mm. is for life. And God designed it that way. I, I mean, you may have, you know, people may come from broken families or, or, you know, all kinds of different situations. And I understand those, that can sometimes be a hard thing. But if God has you in a, 
in a household right now and you have children in your household, you have a family that yeah. God has given you. You and your spouse, or if you're a single mom or single dad, your children are your, are, this is the family God has given them. And it's yeah. our responsibility as their parents to train them on how to live with one another. And mm. God chose that. God knew he needed, they needed each other in order to yeah. grow them in their character, to grow them in their, in their walk with the Lord. And so um, that way they can learn better what he has for them and they can start to appreciate one another and yeah. that there are this team that God has created. I mean, who better to pick a, key, a team than God? And so he, right. he placed them into the family. He made them the way they are. You may have siblings who, you know, very, very different from one another. Some may have learning issues or developmental issues or, you know, challenging things. And some kids can feel feel um, like, why does it have to be so hard in this family? God wanted it that way for your good for yeah. all, and for others to see you navigate through this. It will grow you and, and what a blessing it will be. So that's kind of the overall yeah, you know, overarching. I'm, I there, you know, I may tell you a couple quotes I've said to the kids as we walk through this sure. uh, process, but <laughs> it's not going to be a step one, two, three. It's really principles right. that we need to remind mm. ourselves of regularly. Yeah, children are a gift to one another. Siblings are a gift to each other, and we tell our girls that all the time. And of course, most of the time they roll their eyes because we tell them that. Of course, when there's conflict, like yes. stop fighting with your sister. She is a gift to you, and they're like, really? This is not a gift I asked for. <laughs> and and. What what I have found with our family to be difficult is that my girls, um, they, they they do get along really, really well sometimes. They have a great relationship sometimes. And then, you know, they bicker and fight with each other sometimes as well. But I didn't fight with my sister very much growing up. Almost never. I mean, I, oh. maybe when we were younger, we did. But the reason I think is because we're so different and I love my sister dearly, um, but we are, we could not be more opposite than we than we are. And so I never wanted anything she had. She never wanted anything I had. We almost just kind of lived our life separately. And then we were away at school all day, every day, and then kind of home and go to our bedrooms and do our own separate thing. And we just were so different that we didn't really have anything to fight about. So then when, when I started realizing like, okay, my friends fight with their siblings and, you know, now my kids fight with each other. So, like, it just seemed weird and foreign to me. Like, why do you have to fight with each other like that? Because yeah. I didn't do that with my sister and I have a great relationship with my sister <laughs> now. Uh, but still, we're so, so different. And uh, so it, every family has different dynamics. Um, and so we'll talk about that more, but we're going to take a break first. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Sherry. Um, Sherry, ta let's, let's talk about some tools that we can use to help kids get along with one another. And I love that you talked about the importance of them learning to get along and love each other because that sets them up for successful relationships in the future, whether with their spouse, their coworkers, their own family members, their children, their in-laws. I mean, imagine <laughs> what a different world we would live in if we all learned how to get along with each other when we were young and how to accept each other's differences and things like that. Um, so, so let's talk through some tools that we can use as parents to help our kids get along with one another. Okay. Well, I think the first one is the family unit. So understanding that they're part of a family, a heritage. Um, again, I know many people have started a new heritage, maybe their first generation believers or first generation homeschoolers, and it, their family dynamic looks very different than what they grew up with. But you have a heritage that you're creating. And I'm not talking about, you know, we came over from the Mayflower or my grandpa and immigrated from wherever. I'm talking about our name, our family name. And so yeah. Um, our family name is so important. A good name is more desirable than great riches. And so your children carry your name um, wherever they go. So bad behavior reflects badly on the family. Good mm -hmm. behavior reflects well on the family. And we would tell our kids, you know, you guys are Seligsons. And so Seligsons don't lie. Seligsons are kind. Seligsons share. This is how we, this is our family identity of who we are. Why? Because God has called us to be that way. That's the why. But that is who we are. And so I, we would continually come back to those kinds of phrases that we wanted our family to be known for. And that would help them um, internalize 
those, mm-hmm. those, you know, as they're going through Selix and share, Selix and share. I know Selix and share. I don't want to share. Well, <laughs> Selixes are selfless. And so you even if you don't want to, you I mean, those are those are the, that's the terms that we want to utilize to help them to, to understand that this is biblical too. God has given us a name, a family that we carry with us. And, you know, we are, we will have unique things that we do as a family. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. And, and many of them are fun and quirky or, or whatever. And those help bond at your children together too. But then understanding each other's uniqueness. And um, that's really important. How they react to things differently. And they will. Every individual you know, your littles aren't going to understand how to be careful with the older's things. And so olders need to understand, yeah. you know, they're going to they're going to tear apart. You spent, you know, 10 hours on this Lego model. Your three-year-old brother is going to demolish it if he gets his hands on right. it. Not because he doesn't like you or love you. It's because he's three and he just right. wants to be where you are in your world. Um, so we need to consider that, you know, they also could put things in their mouths. And um, because they're younger than you, you love them and we will defer to them in many places and share so when you have a safe opportunity with this little one, this is the time to share and do things. There will be times you do things as a big person away from the little one. Mm-hmm. So that's one issue, but it's because we're for them. And then as they get older, they can learn how each other processes things. Some children hold things in. Some things are, some some kids are just very emotional and you know exactly how they're feeling at all times. So discuss those things. Um, some kids, you know, like love languages, what what blesses each other yeah. and and try personality tests as they get much older because you're going to find you've got introverts and extroverts. Some kids will bond better just being quiet, playing alongside each other. Some kids want to interact and talk. And for those who don't want to interact and talk, it's exhausting for them to, you know, as a as an introvert, um, I love yeah. people. I love to talk to people, but it very energi- energy depleting. So after, you know, a conference, I'm just sleeping for a day. Uh, whereas a person who's an extrovert gets energized by that. They just want to be around 1,500 more people again. And so we have kids like that. We And they're yeah. not going to understand what what you know of yourself is how you tend to believe other people behave too. And oh, that's right. yeah. not necessarily the, the, the way it works. You've got boys. You've got girls. Boys tend to be, as a whole, a little more energetic and maybe less communicative. Girls tend to be a little more emo- emotional or aware of their emotions. And so- mm. Um, understanding them, helping them to understand themselves, and then helping them to understand how the other one operates and how the other one um, behaves. And that's important for us as parents to know too, because sure. that will affect how we address them, how we you know parent them. Um, but again, it's it's so important to have conversations about these things so they can understand each other, but not after an explosion. Um, right. th- that's not the best time to do it. So uh, it's not a good time to wait for the toddler to, you know, rip up the Lego and say, well, you know, da 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 da. <laughs> it's because this is the time, it's time to do it. It's like when things are calm and maybe you're having dinner, everybody's happy, they're eating food, you know, make chicken nuggets or whatever it is. There's no immediate conflict. And so that's the time to start talking about personalities. Hey guys, I read about this. What do you guys think about this? You know, some people are this way, some people are that way. How would you respond to this situation? Oh, interesting. I would behave this way and help them understand mm. those you, those unique behaviors because they'll they'll start to grasp that, you know, your sister, when you say something harshly, to just even if it's kind, but you say it in a harsh way or yeah. or volume, volume might make her, she's very tender hearted and, and it just, it hurts her, her spirit when you speak loudly to her. Not that you didn't mean to be unkind, but understanding that helps them to then work through that and be more mindful of their interactions. And um, so that's a very important tool to help them understand. Um, another yeah. one is intentional togetherness. Uh, we, you know, we want to work through how to share toys. We, 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 sure. we, we, helping them understand that playing alone is not necessarily as much fun as doing things together. You know, I, re- I would, I'll share with people, you know, um, who I've just met. Have you ever seen a movie that that someone else has seen and you love it? Like, I a yeah. very common one is like Princess Bride. A lot of people have seen that. I was that. literally just going to say the Princess Bride. And so if I would, if I threw out in a <laughs> Best group, movie you know, ever. Yes, give me a quote from Princess Bride. People who have seen it will start quoting things. And then all of a sudden right. you're laughing together because you've had a shared experience. That mm-hmm. shared experience, that togetherness mm-hmm. builds a bond and then you can mm-hmm. go from there. And so um, encouraging them to have, you know, get group toys, um, puzzles, yeah. Frisbee, things that they need one another to play. There's a lot of great mm-hmm. group games out there that they work together as a team and everybody wins or, you know, against the clock or something. Those are ways that they can build that that connection yeah. um, togetherness. Sharing rooms, you know, that that's that's a 
we tend in our culture to divide our kids, give them everything individually, keep them separate because it minimizes conflict, but then they're not learning how to, mm -hmm. to do that. We had three boys and a girl. Our girl was our youngest, and we had the boys separate at first for in two boys in one room, one boy and our baby daughter in the other room. And that third child, that third boy, would hear his brothers playing and laughing, and oh. I could tell he was sad. And so we had a tiny house, but we moved the three boys together in the room. We put bunk beds, and we did all kinds of crazy things to make it work um, because I wanted them to be together. They had yeah. their, that created more friction, and it was more work for me. But you all mm -hmm. know this. Anything worthwhile is is hard work. Right. Homeschooling yeah. is not easy, but it's worthwhile. And it right. the the fruit is so great. And so um, yeah. we worked out. And I'm not saying you've got to put all your kids together in a room, but sure. <laughs> look for opportunities. <laughs> Which some people do. <laughs> well, right. Well, and that's, you know, that's okay. But it's yeah, it, it's it's rather than trying to to keep the peace, because mm -hmm. separating like that is for me to keep my peace. So I can just get dinner. Right. So I can just, you know, that screaming kid gets on that nerve in our brain and we start going like this and we go, you know, yeah. then we look really crazy and our kids see us like this. <laughs> we don't want that. Um, but so we try to avoid that. But again, it, you're missing opportunities to yeah. train them to be together. Um, shared yeah. experiences are, so, and we'll talk about that too. Um, one of the blessings of homeschooling are those shared experiences, yeah. that build bonds. And so um, serving one another, be, sharing together is serving. And service is something that I don't think people connect with sharing. So we we serve one another as an act of love to each other. You know, serve your brother by just sitting down and playing this game. I know you don't love this kind of game, but you're serving him, you're loving him, you're showing him that he's important. So, you know, take 15 minutes and play this, and then maybe he will serve you by playing the thing you want. We do things for one another because we love each other, and yeah. that's a, a service. So when you share your toys, it's an act of service. When you're doing it with some someone younger, it, you're deferring to them. You're it's mm -hmm. selfless to do that, and so we're coming back to building character. Yeah, character is yeah. so important. That's another tool for yeah. your children to gain in this relationship building. Yeah, we have so many opportunities with our kids to navigate through these relationships that they would never otherwise get. I won't say never. I shouldn't say that. If your kids are in school all day throughout the week. They're not going to have those opportunities when they're in school, but there are opportunities in the evening and on the weekends to do that. But it's different. It's just a different kind of lifestyle. It's a different atmosphere. And especially when you're talking about intentional togetherness, I mean, that is so important because it is hard. It is really hard. It does create more work for mom to homeschool. It does create more work for mom to have all of her kids in the same room. But these are the things that allow us to, to, to work with our kids together and help teach them because if they're in a classroom, you could have the greatest teacher in the whole world who l genuinely loves your kids, but she cannot teach your child how to get along with every other child in the classroom or how to get along with their siblings. That's our job. That's our job as mom and dad is to teach our kids how to do those things. And homeschooling provides that opportunity for us that that I think is so missed. I recently, this was a couple months ago, I saw um, somebody you know, put a, a, I think it was a tweet or something like that. I don't know. I don't look on Twitter, but I saw it on Facebook, <laughs> some message Someone on some social somewhere. media. Someone yeah. said, when you homeschool your kids, you get an additional 1000 hours with them per year. So you, we would lose a thousand hours with our kids every year if they weren't home with us. That's a thousand hours of training our kids' hearts, training them to get along with one another. I mean, you think about that. That's a lot of time that we have to build character, to teach them how to love each other, to teach them what God's word says about loving one another, to help them understand each other's uniqueness. And, and I appreciate that you talk about that too, because they are so different. I, of course, with having two, I have an introvert and I have an extrovert. My introvert, she loves to be around people sometimes, but if she's around too many people for too long, she'll just retreat and she'll tell us. I mean, she's like, I got it. I just... I need to be by myself for a little bit. And then my extrovert's like knocking on her door. You know, she's the, yeah. do you want to build a snowman? You know, like she just, <laughs> like she just, <laughs> she wants something, someone to come out and play with her and talk to her and just be around her because she's my extrovert. And so my girls are now at the age where they understand each other. My youngest understands that her sister needs to have some quiet time sometimes. And, you know, my oldest understands that her sister sometimes needs sister time. And so 
It's tough though. It's it's a tough thing um, to teach kids because it's hard to understand how other people think when you don't think that way. Like you said, I'm an extrovert. And so I have a hard time understanding introverts. Like, why don't you want to come out and be with me? Why don't you want to be around lots and lots of people? (laughs) It's weird to me. It's fun. The more the merrier. (laughs) It's great. Well, and you touched on something with the time. I think that this is an important part too. Um, A lot of Um, parents will try to have quality time with their kids and they'll set up date Mm -hmm. nights and whatever, which are great. I'm not saying that don't do that. Do that. That's really fun. But sometimes you need quantity time to have quality time because the hard questions, the hard situations will pop up randomly. You know, I I tried once taking one of my sons on a date. We went to, you know, get a cup of coffee and he was young. This was like preteen. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and they're, he's looking at me like, you know, let me talk about well, yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, but 11 o'clock at night, you know, I'm or 10 o'clock at night, I'm right. ready to go to bed. And he's like, hey, mom, can we talk about, you know, something super important? When we have quantity time, like that extra thousand hours you're talking about, mm-hmm. it gives us more opportunities to hit those quality moments because they right. will organically happen. You might be studying, I don't know, the war. Uh, it's one of the world wars or something mm-hmm. or, or something in your and the They'll ask a really hard question. And as a homeschooler with that time, we can say, instead of saying, oh, we got to get through this chapter because we got to get to the test by the end of the week or whatever, we can say, you know, that's an important question. Let's talk about it. Close the yeah. book, book away. Let's talk. And that's where some of the richest conversations will come, include, you know, engaging all the family that way or the siblings. Um, so time is really a part of that. Yeah. And, and it's a blessing. I understand that not everybody can homeschool all their kids. Sure. And I'm not saying you're, you know, you can still do that, but look for those time opportunities yeah. because that's where some of this conversation, some of the character building, you know, a lot of people are str- stressed about getting all those academics in because, you know, yeah. kids have to get a good job and, and make money to be millionaires or whatever it is. Um, but you know that employers are looking for people with character. They can, yeah. they can train skills. Mm-hmm. They can, tra- they can't train character. Right. That's our job. Like you were saying, that's the parent's job. We have the time. We have the teaching moments. Um, even a teacher in a school can't train character like a parent right. can. So, and yeah. that is one of the biggest, I think one of the most important, I would call it academic skills sure. that your children yeah. need. Hardworking, punctual, responsible, all yeah. of these character traits that will help them at, at, you know, as leaders of households, as, as, um, and wor- as workers, there mm-hmm. our homeschoolers are wanted. They are wanted yeah. by people right. out there because they see the character and they can't right. train character. So right. It's, and it's the an reason they part. can't train others can't train it like we can is because others don't know our kids the way that we know them. We know our kids better than anyone else. Their flaws, their weaknesses, their strengths, you know, all the things. We know them better than anyone and we love them more than anyone. And so we pay attention to what's going on in them. And and you know, sometimes my girls, it's really funny. Oftentimes I'll say something, they'll be sad about something or maybe even happy about something. And I'll tell them what they're thinking. And still they're like, how did you know? I'm like, because I know you and I can tell the expression (laughs) on your face and I know what's happening, you know, in in your mind. And so I I love that I know my girls that well. Um, So anyway, we're going to keep talking about sibling relationships, but we are out of time. Stay tuned to the very end so you can hear a clip of what's coming up next on the podcast with Sherry. Um, You guys, thank you so much for being with us today. And if you've not left a review for this podcast, would you do that? We would greatly appreciate it wherever you listen to this podcast. And you can find everything again at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. You may have a, a, a people-pleasing child, and the people-pleasing oh, yeah. child is going to be the one that will always do what mom and dad are asking and, and always right. be, you know, and your, your, you know, star student or whatever you want to call it. Right. And the non-people-pleasing child, not because they don't want to please people, but the one mm-hmm. who's wired a different way is going to see the 
their sibling as this goody two shoes. And what do they do? They go the opposite because they think, well, I'm never going to be like that. And so I'm never going to be praised for this. So I'm just going to go do my own thing. And that's usually the opposite. So we really want to be alert to that. We really want to look for the positives in each of them and help them to see those positives. And again, they're God-given positives. God knows in his wisdom 